Welcome to this special edition of Toffee TV. We've got Dr. David France back with us. We know you all love him out there. He is a legend of Everton Football Club, but he's never played for the club. He's never coached the club. He's never managed the club. So we are going to find out why he is a legend of, of, of Everton Football Club. His new book is out this week, Everton Crazy. There you go. Me and Baz have got, obviously got our... Oh, three, three copies of, of signed, it that we're going to take home. And, uh, he hasn't signed it. No, oh, he hasn't signed it. But it, it is an interesting question which some people have asked me now and again. Who, who, who is Dr. David of France? And this book is going to tell us everything we need to know. But we're just going to get a little bit of a little bit more today, David, out of you. Because you come on here, you're always a good laugh. You always give us some brilliant stories. But you never give us your stories about you, about what... What what not only what made you an Evertonian, but what you've given back to Everton? Because I think that's the main thing. And I, I you know, I, I don't expect you to sit here going, "I've done this forever and I've done that for Everton." But we'll do that. Your yeah, your your history, in raveled, you know, with Everton. It, it's it's absolutely amazing. It's an odyssey, isn't it? it? It's well, it's amazing. I mean, you don't, you know, you. you I, want, I really do want you to put it out there how how influential you've been over the last few years. You know, um, you set up the former players' foundation. You set up the Everton collection, which is just we could do hours on that. You you set up the Hall of Fame. You're bringing that back as well this season. Yeah, yeah. You're a lifetime president of the Shareholders Association. You've also written sixteen books surrounding Everton Football Club. I mean. I mean, where do we? Where do you want to begin? At the beginning, surely. Should we start at the beginning? Go on. You you were brought up in witness. Oh, I'm very proud to be brought, brought well, up. Well, there has to be witness. one person, doesn't it? The witness, which is, as you know, the birthplace of me and the birthplace of toxic waste. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was raised by uh, by two Evertonians, two good Evertonians, two very kind people. Um, my father was an Evertonian by birth. He was a fourth generation Evertonian. My mother was a Geordie and she was an Evertonian by choice, not necessarily her own choice. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't quite sit right. Mm. But my, I was indoctrinated from, from, day, from day one. I mean, all I ever knew about was Everton. I can remember, I must have been about four, and uh, in the days before television, that the news had spread that Dave Hickson, had, uh, had, we beat Manchester United in the cup. And Dave Hickson's the famous one where he's got this gash on his yeah, head. And yeah. A neighbour would come in. My dad hadn't gone to the match, but the neighbour would come in, and I could just see. I can still see the two of them getting so excited about talking about it. And I didn't know what Everton was then, but I knew that when I was old enough, I wanted my share of it <laughs> because it looked like it was this magical thing. Um, I was raised in very poor circumstances. I mean, this is. Uh, if you, if, if Alex Young was around, he would tell you that my story, he thinks my story is inspirational. And he thinks, you know, he was one of the reasons why he, uh, he said, you've got to get it down. You've got, you know, you, you've got to get your story down. And not just your Everton story, but my story myself. I was brought up in post-war witness, um, in, in poverty, in dire poverty, where we lived in the house that had one light bulb, uh, one cold tap, and Were the Tories in in witness at that time? Never been in in witness. Never been in witness. This was the post-war affluence of oh, witness. Right. <laughs> and, and my dad was a labourer. My mum worked in a um, works in the laundry. Hard-working people, honest, hard-working people, kind people. That's what I remember about my childhood. Was that it was kind, uh, but my dad was generous. But we never thought he was generous to us. I always thought my sister was being brought up as an only child, you know, and. Uh, I keep these gags coming, you know. Just, just <laughs> tell me when you want them. No, to come. just keep keep them going. Um, and we were, well, I was a, as a kid, I was sick, right? I was, I was always a sickly kid, you know. If it wasn't scarlet fever, it was something else and whatever. And I, and I had a limp, and I had a lisp, and I wasn't the brightest of kids, right? And my dad used to say, he's a lovely lad, our David. He's a bit slow, but he's a lovely lad. And that's the way I was brought up. Obviously, I failed 11 plus and I went to a secondary modern school. And the reason for that was I couldn't read. Mm. I, in fact, I couldn't read till I was 14. And I was relegated with the poor kids who couldn't read. I was bright and I, I was frustrated mm. about being bright, but I couldn't read. Therefore, I couldn't really communicate yeah. with people. And uh, so at 14, I was looking at what jobs to do and I wanted 
you know, follow my dad into you know labour and it, it, my dad worked for ICI. They sounded good, sounded good enough. Um, by then, of course, I'd already got the Everton bug. My dad had took me when I was nine. I was a little, you know, short kid. He took me when I was nine, and uh, the best thing he did, he let me go back on my own when I was eleven. And then by twelve, th th my, my parents were Methodists, so they were really strict, but they had this great belief in that you should experience life. Mm. Um, you know that life was more than living was more than just breathing. Yeah. And to go out and then, you know they both joined the RAF when they were seventeen each. So they were, they had it's adventure in, in them. So we uh, did let me go uh, to the away games to places like the Stokes, the Boltons, the Blackburns when I was thirteen on my own. And when I reached fourteen, they let me hitchhike. So at fourteen, I hitchhiked all over the place with kids who were older than me. Any fourteen-year-olds out there? Don't hitchhike just because they've. I, they I don't it. even think fourteen-year-olds would know what hitchhiking no, was no, anymore. Well, yeah. and it, we, but don't. we didn't know the dangers of it, mm. and and there's some great stories in in the book about hitchhiking. Um, don't forget the book. Um, but I don't advise. <laughs> I honestly don't advise it to ever. But I hitchhike all the while. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I didn't have it, it, the, the theory was that if you hitchhike somewhere, you can always get back. You can always <laughs> get the train back. They're not going to. Oh, okay. They're not going to. They're not going to. You know, deny your access to the train as long as you get there. So we went all over the place. I mean, oh, you just had this figure though, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, no, no, well, you, we, you know, we hung around. We, what what hitchhiking? What hitchhiking does for you? It matures you. It develops your ability to judge people. Hopefully. Okay. Hopefully. What happens if you're already in the car and you think, hmm, no, we I don't probably judge know. this one a bit wrong? You, well, this, that's very rare that happens. <laughs> I've got some great stories on that one. Yeah, on, the on a different road. channel. Yeah, I've got no, to say, if, you, if you want real stories on yeah. Sky as well. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we you missed an important part. What was your first game? My first game was Manchester nine. United. Um, my dad took me. Uh, he took because um, I was so small, I couldn't see over the wall. It was in the paddock. He took yeah. a, um, a milk crate. As and, you and he parked the car near Anfield because he wanted to make a comparison. My dad called Goodison Mama Blue. That was his okay. name for it. Yeah. And we parked on, on maybe an Anfield road and we walked him. My dad was a big, big strapping fella. Yeah. He carried this milk crate and carried me. And we, uh, what I walked with him. Yeah. And we, as we approached Goodison, the big towers were up on for the floodlights, but the floodlights weren't on. Like, they hadn't yeah. played. They hadn't been switched on yet. Yeah. It, I think it, it was a midweek game okay. uh, against Manchester United, the Busby Babes. And as we got closer and closer and closer, you got you just got wrapped up in the excitement mm. of it all. And, uh, and once we got inside the ground, you know, it was just incredible. It was That's like a cool. spiritual experience. Mm. You know, like these pylons were puncturing the heavens. <laughs> the, you know, the emotion was wrapped round mm. by those balconies, the, the blue and white balconies yeah. that you had. And there were 70 odd thousand people there. And I, I'd never been, you know, I was a Methodist. Yeah, yeah. I'd never been subjected to such profanity. Everyone <laughs> was bilingual. There were scousers and they were, you know, and they swore a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful thing. And uh, we stood by the, um, at the wall on this, on this, on this crate and um, I didn't see much of the game. It was 3-3, three, three. Okay. Uh, finished 3-3. Three, three. Okay. Uh, oh, cracker, United were ahead 3-1 and we fought back and to make it 3-3, three, three, standing ovation at the end. You know, when, yeah, sportsmanship at yeah. its best yeah. in those yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. United were the, the champions, they were, you know, uh, shot six months later, they were, you know, they'd, they'd had the Munich yeah. disaster. And, uh, and it, six months later, every kid in Witness supported Manchester United, except me and a few of my mates. And I remember my dad coming up to me and saying, you know, this is a terrible thing but that's happened, but don't you even think about it. <laughs> you're an Evertonian and uh, I've given you this gift which is the gift of Everton now I said we were poor and like at Christmas like we didn't get much for Christmas we got the sock and the orange yeah, yeah. except we didn't get the orange you know <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. we got, and I said to my dad what, he said what do you want for Christmas and I said I'd like a bike he said no nah, you can't have a bike son you know I've already given you Everton and he said, that's the greatest gift I can give you and I said I still like a bike though yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably my dad's excuse for all those years. <laughs> so that was so. Uh, by the time I was fourteen, I was travelling all over, and it matured me. And I left school at um, fifteen, just mm. fifteen. I couldn't get a job. Uh, eventually, I got a job, uh, an interview for a gas fitter. I all wanted a trade, 
and I went to the interview and I had all these stories about my hobbies, you know, fly fishing, you know, all the things that you've developed, <laughs> Shakespeare. And the guy said to me, what do you do? I said, well, I hitchhike to Everton Games. And he looked at me and he said, oh, you're in Everton? And I said, yeah, that's great. And he said, well, you want the job? And I said, yeah. At Durban then, it was as if like it was a gift I'd been blessed. That was it. And uh, by then I could read. And when you can read after you've been denied reading mm. for so long, I'd figured it out just to myself. Nobody had helped me. It opens up a world to you that had been denied to you. When you can't read, you fake read it. It's like a lot of things in life that you fake. Yeah. You, you, you fake it, you, you prefer not to read. You avoid reading. Mm. And then you just don't want people to understand that you can't read. Yeah. And that was one of the great things of going to Goodison. When I went to Everton, no one knew I couldn't you were read. Equal, yeah. You know, no one could. I mean, you were just you were equal. You were taken for what you were. Yeah. You, you know, you're surrounded by great fellowship and friendship and and camaraderie and people looking after you because I was just a small kid. People would look after you. Yeah. And uh, and then once I got to read, I went to Tech College, and of course by then, you know, I, I, this was my chance. Mm. And, it's it, uh, it's funny because it's that's such a like a thing now that no one would even bring up, you know, the the right to read. Everyone sort of has the right now, don't they? To, well, you know, kids are reading four or five and you didn't get yeah. that till you were 14. And can't, and no, I know, but I'm saying There's a lot of people still can't yeah. read. I mean, I now and then you see people who say, oh, I can't, I haven't got my glasses. Can yeah. you just do this for me? Well, you do what you, you do and you fake it. Yeah. Well, in my story, 14 years later, from, from by the time I was 28, I had four degrees. I had, um, you know, a first class honours degree, a master's of science, a PhD and an MBA. And MBAs were the rare thing in those days. It didn't, yeah, I got that from America. I'd been, I'd, I'd been educated in three different countries and I'd done it part time. I'd, I'd earned my own way to do it. Uh, Did you help with America? The, I hitchhiked from Manchester to good. <laughs> I hitchhiked <laughs> along the East Lanks Road on a regular basis. That was always there. Because yeah. I was a lot older in, in my head than a lot of the kids that when I went to university, I went with kids who were from grammar schools or public yeah. schools and whatever, but they hadn't been to like the Goodison Boys Pen mm. and they hadn't had that education. I was a lot more mature. They were out drinking, you know, having a great time. I liked a good time, but I was there for one reason. I was Just there to get an education. Yeah. So, and then I met my good lady wife who's in the other room and he, now you should bring her in and see if she, <laughs> she'll tell you if any of this She verifies the story, it's yeah. True. And what she, what she said to me was when, when we got married, and I, you know, I, there's no truth in the room. She comes from Farnworth and Alan Ball says she's the other good thing to come from Farnworth, which may upset the families of Tommy Lawton and Peter Kay <laughs> and people like that, but Fred Dibner. Do you remember him? The guy used to blow up the, the tunnel, uh, the yeah, chimneys. Yeah, yeah. You remember that no guy? Awful well. fan. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, I thought I thought she may know Alan Ball. You know, so I hung around with her for a while. Of course, she didn't like but you know, not at that time. Um, <laughs> and when we decided we'd been mates for a while, and when we decided that you know we, we were right, for, compatible for one another, um, you know, we, we got married, went on honeymoon, and on honeymoon she did the confrontation did she realized then she hadn't just married me she'd married Everton mm. and she made it quite clear that this what the story was in that you can you can you know carry on watching Everton as much as you do because you're not going to change on that but you know she said you were a slow learner for 14 years you were a fast learner for 14 years you can work for 14 years <laughs> right <laughs> and then after that you got to retire when you're 42 and after that you can do something me more meaningful with your life than work, and then you can watch Everton, right? Because when you get to 70, you'll be dead. So this, I'm now, <laughs> I'm now 68. So, God. so you know, it's what she said to you. It's called the Malta Protocol. It was established there and then. Okay. You know, this was the deal. But the important thing is, you can only work till you're 14. The two you're 42 awesome. for 14 years, and that's what I did. I was um, invited to go to the United States by Senator Edward Kennedy. I couldn't get a job in England, which is typical. You know, I'd go for a job and they'd say to you, <clears throat> what does your father do? And I said, well, he's, he shuffles toxic weight. And, you know, from all accounts, he's pretty good at it, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they sort to of look down the nose at me and clear up, you know. Um, so how did this come about then, Edward Kennedy? Well, he he knew of what the I'd got all sorts of gold medals from my, you know from my scholarship. I mean, I'd done really well. I'd, I'd lectured all across America. I'd I'd met people and whatever. And uh, do, you, do you ever do you, have you ever watched Forrest Gump? Yeah. I thought that's me. 
No, not at all. You should. Because no, you probably might be able to run as fast. <laughs> yeah, Seamus, Seamus Coleman is Forrest Gump, I understand, isn't he? Didn't yeah. somebody say that about him the other day? Did they? Yeah, David Moyes said that about Seamus Coleman. Yeah. Yeah. He's quite, nice. Mm, running quite nice about him, isn't it? Yeah. But he likes chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Quality. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. I just. It's so just mad. Let, it's just just mad. let me tell you that. that so uh, I, I worked for NASA. You know, we talk about yeah, NASA. Yeah, yeah. I worked for NASA. Worked in the nuclear industry, helping you know Kenny, for Kennedy's folks, and then I got the job that I wanted to, which was an oil company. I always wanted to run an oil company, and uh, I, I went. As you, you doing with this? Yeah, as you do. Well, yeah. by now my ambitions were. You know, I, I I no longer had the chip on each shoulder. I, you know, I was my own man, and. Uh, and I went and uh, I got to, I did great, fantastic. I, I travelled all over, I always watched, stopped by to watch Everton. It's funny how, you know, job takes you that way, doesn't it? And um, I got to 42 and um, I told them all I was leaving. And they all thought it was un-American. That's what I remember the saying to me. They all thought I was joking. Yeah. You're going to walk away I now at 42. So. You've still got, you know, the whole, no. I made a promise to, to her from Farmouth. There's more important things to do in life. There than, is, you're not wrong. You know. There is. When you were in you were in Houston, when you I was you in, in Houston, Houston. Yeah. And you still had your season ticket? I did, yeah. Now is it true that you used to fly back just for home games? Yes it is. But that the best part of it is the the next phase after that I had the season. What do you do when you retire? There you go, much Everton every week, don't you? Yeah, but you normally live in Southport or somewhere well, like that. I used to I used to be in row R in the Joe Mercer suite in the corner there. Yeah. And I sat there just minding my own business, like good Everton, surrounded by some cracking people, some smashing Everton. I mean, Evertonians are special, aren't they? They'd be sat around with them and we'd chat and whatever. And I said to one of them, Oh, I was late today, you're late today, yeah. which you're not normally. I said, Yeah, there's a lot of traffic on the M1. M1? He said, You get the M1 from Chester? And I said, Oh, I live in Houston, Texas. <laughs> We've been going here for 18 months. <laughs> he said to me, And you live in Houston? They didn't know. They thought I lived in Chester. There you go, Houston, Texas. And that's when he said, he said, he said to me, you, you know, you, you, you're Everton mad. Or yeah. Everton or, or ever oh, crazy, Evan. crazy. See what we did there. <laughs> so yeah, you used to go to home games from Houston. Yeah, that yeah. that's that makes loads of sense. Um, I'll never moan about that twenty-minute drive now, can we? <laughs> yeah. Well, why wouldn't you? in traffic? Tell me, what, if you had the chance to do it, why wouldn't? You? I'm not saying. What well, Everton? Why did you fly to Manchester? Sorry? When did you fly to Manchester? Oh, we had a direct flight into Gatwick. So I'd fly to Gatwick, it was only 10 hours. <laughs> it was a 10 hour flight into Gatwick and then it's about a three hour drive up and... Uh, At all? Yeah, what were yeah. you driving? For well, a three hour drive? I used to say, to, I had an argument once with Hertz and the, you know, I got my car and everything went outside yeah. and it's red. <laughs> and there's no way I'm flying 10 for 10 hours and going to drive a red car as the, you know. So. <laughs> um, well, why wouldn't you do it? Why, if you got, if you can do anything with your life, you know, when you no. don't have that burden of work yeah. and you're not restricted, to, you can live anywhere you I've want. I've had a really bad day at work. <laughs> I don't know whether my missus will be after I walk home. Well, let me ask you this, let me ask you this question. She told me to walk away from work. I'm not going back. I'd yeah. be on yeah. the step with a suitcase. Let me ask tomorrow. you this question then. Why didn't you come home? I did come home to look after my mother. Yeah. Uh, and we both did. What, what you do, there's a great sense of, uh, I mean, I kept, kept in contact with Everton all the while. I got the echo would come every Thursday. My mother would write to me every week, you know. My mother had, had, just... this, had this thing about McLions. Oh, <laughs> what year was this? Oh, this was up to, I retired in 90. So, no, because people would be like, you got the echo, why didn't you just go online? Oh no! It was before. It was before. Before no, was you could before go on the line. On yeah, the line. it was. Be, it was before then. Yeah, yeah. and uh, oh, you'd you'd hunt for the results. Mm. You, there was no mm. mechanism. I remember when we used to have this radio. Uh, sorry, this uh, telephone service for the Everton result. Do you remember that? I, I can't remember. What it was my mum. My mum remembers. My yeah, mum remembers. Um, remembers club call. My mum. My yeah. mum knows about club call. Yeah. Club call. My dad doesn't. Yeah. Luckily yeah. enough, my club, dad doesn't. That's well, why you're still here. That's well, why you're here, isn't it? Yeah. Mine does. Yeah. Uh, so we come home, looked after, uh, we looked after, we looked after our parents. Both I, I did, and my wife did, and because you got to, I mean, you, you enjoy doing it yeah. when you've been away from home for so long. Yeah. You enjoy doing it, uh, and then like you, you do other things. One of the things that I, I always wanted to change someone's life. My, I wanted to change my own life mm. by changing a stranger's life. I thought about changing the life of a copite, you know, changing the red into a blue. 
but I thought I'd start a little bit yeah. easier than that. I'd take a smack at I would change the life of people that life has given up on them. And I would, I would change it. I I would change why would we have to read that out? He said it, not me. Is that, is that not allowed? No, that's allowed. Yeah, worry. David, I'm sorry. Say whatever, whatever you want. No, say whatever you want. If that's not appropriate, I do apologise. <laughs> it's, it's appropriate. It, and it's a generalised I wanted, I wanted to change the life of someone that everyone had given up on. Yeah. I should have tried a cop out, shouldn't I? But I was just... I, I was just well, you could have started with me. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't work out well. And it didn't no. work. No, so I thought I'd try something a lot easier, which is looking after our older players. Well, I was going to say, is, is this where you moved on to getting involved with Everton? Yeah. Uh, we had, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd got, had a great uh, industry experience, and I thought that football then was very backwards. It was like a, a, a convenience store. It was like a mum and pop store. And I'd, I'd offered my services to them on a, on a free basis, you know. I, when after I'd retired, people invited me to come and help them. Like Lord um, Rothschild had asked mm. me to come and help look after some companies and turn them around. And Doesn't he own the world? Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he does. He, started, <laughs> he, he paid for the war. That's that's what he, he kind of yeah. If you could just I give a mind. I was going to say, could you? Could we'll, you just yeah. I'm yeah. sure he'd want to invest in Sofi TV. <laughs> Pretty sure. Unbelievable. Think about that. Have a little think about it. Just while I mean, and you I, know. I can have less bad days, and then Paul, who, who I love yeah. dearly, who now doesn't like me, but I don't oh, like him at this moment. He's one. He's my friend. He's my friend. <laughs> Lord Rothschild. No, oh, oh Paul. Lord Rothschild is. Uh, <laughs> Paul's a good lad. I had, can I tell you? Uh, anyway, carry well, on. Sorry. Well, Lord Rothschild, they're, they're real nice people. They, they yeah. appreciate the fact they appreciate they appreciate the fact that you can, <laughs> <laughs> no they appreciate the fact that you can contribute something to them, you know, okay. and and, and yeah. that is so. After I'd done that and 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 whatever, I'd, um, I would approach Everton saying, "Can I help you in some way?" And, and they I'm, said, "Come in and get on the board and run our lovely club." Wasn't far off that Peter Johnson said, "Come okay. on in and turn us around." Right, okay. and I said we'll do it for nothing. I'll bring in a an accountant, a PR guy, a lawyer, and me, and we'll spend our time. I think, I think the club. I've still not got two of those yeah. things. No. I'm start crying. <laughs> and we'll develop a strategic plan, and we'll focus on the big picture. This is yeah. remember the Premierships. Yeah, the just Premierships about, yeah, about yeah. to come. Football's changing. I'd come from the United States, I'd seen see where it was sports. going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was quite clear where it was going. Yeah. You see where the television was going to dominate. You could see where player power was coming in. We'll come in and we'll sort it out in the long term while you were, you know, you were doing whatever you're doing with the tickets and the programs mm. and the pies and whatever mm. uh, on the shop. And he agreed to it. And then he he'd met with the board and he wasn't, his ideas weren't very well. Uh, received my ideas weren't well received so we didn't do it but then I went to them and said I, you don't want me to interfere in your business but uh, maybe there's some things I can help and I came up with a long list of things to, to help uh, I said we should have a museum the, one of the things we've got going for us is our history mm -hmm. we should have a hit we should have a museum that you know it should be the football museum we should have that we should look after our own one yeah. of the things that we have is fellowship you know, we're all in this together, mm. and I don't want to see any of our players walking around the streets with no laces in the shoes. Our old players, we should be looking after them. We should be promoting our history. We should be. We're not going to win anything in the near future. But why don't we celebrate who we are? Let's have a hall of fame. So you go down this whole list of things, and one of the best things that I suggested was there should be a register in in Liverpool. There should be a register of copites. So you know uh, where they live, because after all, and I'm saying it to our friend over here, you wouldn't want to live next door to one. Well, they didn't pick up on that one, yeah. but they picked up on the <laughs> other ones. They said these are great ideas. We've already thought of them. But if you want to do, if you want to, sorry, did you see? If you if you want to if you want to do something about Big them, Duncan, he, he doesn't mind. Is that Duncan? Yeah, he's, he doesn't mind. Oh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want to do it, fine. We'll support you. So off I did, and, and uh, the other thing was, I said, I will raise money, and one of the ways of raising money was writing books. So we, yeah. to, to all the all the books I've written have been for charity. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, they, they always say that, you know, everyone has a book inside of them, and as my wife says, that's where mine should have stayed. 
I think because I used to eat paper when I was a kid. Yeah, um, there you go. Can I just come back to the point about the board? So, the Peter Johnson was happy for he said to be on the board as such, but the other no, board... No, he didn't, was no, I didn't want to be on the no, board. No, no. Uh, not by the last thing I want to be on. But, I don't want to be involved in the yeah. running of anything or well, money helping. in any way. I just wanted to provide strategic okay. advice and help and how you run a proper business. So, so that was, the people who were on the board said no to that. They didn't end the race. So, has that opportunity ever come up again where you would help the club? Because... Oh, no, no. I, I don't want to. I, no, no, I, I don't want to embarrass you here, but I generally feel like if you'd been running the club for the last twenty five years, we, we'd be we'd be, be we'd be one of the top. No, club. no, no. I, I don't take don't make this about me. What this is about. But it is, is about. It you. is about. It's you about don't. people like me to bring in people who have the kind of experience. That, no, like the kind of experience that we have, and also combine that with the passion. The passion of doing. I would work till twenty four hours a day mm. for Everton. No, we know that. You know, I, I it but wouldn't, I, be, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't but be a problem that, to do I'm that. I'm struggling to understand yeah, why when that's offered, because I started work at Everton in ninety five. So I remember what Everton was like when Peter yeah. Johnson was there, and it, we had, we had, probably a sixteenth of the staff they've got now, and I would argue that for a lot of the past maybe not now it's changing a bit now but for a chunk of that time it was run better with when three people done a hundred people's jobs now okay. there was a gap there there was a gap for Evan to be promoted I mean you know too often and this it's only now they're starting to look globally it's everything's been very insular well it should have been 20 30 years ago we should have we should have conquered the United States I mean that, mm. that was open. There was there are more Everton old bars in the United States. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I mean the the, the NS NAS yeah, yeah. was run was yeah, for the benefit of our old bars. Yeah. You know, from Terry Derrick up to Jimmy Gabriel to yeah, Jimmy Husband, Roger Kenyon, they were everywhere. Gabby was big over there. He still, still he still, still is yeah. up in Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was there for us. All we needed to do, you know, is in the summer or just. Tour, I've or this is stop to team. We, 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 we're still we, banging we, we on about this now, we, we David. We're still, well, we, we had may, Tim that Howard may, for that 10 may years. Have gone. But what the thing you've got to remember, though, and this is to be realistic about it what was the name of Birch? What was Birch's first name? Trevor, Trevor Birch. Trevor Birch. He comes last six weeks. How long do you think I would have lasted? And to Trevor yeah, Birch, and we know other people Trevor like Birch that. was there for the you know, but Trevor was Birch, the money. I was there for the house, no, no, so thing, I may not even have lasted the six the, weeks. The difference being when Trevor Birch came was things had changed of ownership. And Trevor Birch, I don't mind saying it, was quite open with what Everton needed to do at that time to mm. change. They needed so to sell okay. Wayne Rooney mm. because Everton had tried to sell him anyway, mm. they needed to redistribute. The shares on the board mm -hmm. get other people in and they needed to look at the ground mm -hmm. and we didn't do he, he got he got basically bounced out the club because we just said we're not going to do that and we did sell Wayne Rooney mm -hmm. and we did try and get other people in with the shares and we couldn't deliver on the ground when we yeah. needed to so but going back when you were when you were approaching it for yourself and I there was a massive gap there at that time. There, yeah. there was a different board. No, yes, it, it, it was. Lord Grantchester would it, have been on it. it Bill was it on was it. It was a different board, but the power was changed. That 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 Peter had. Peter Johnson had the power. He had the control. He had the majority but if he's, shareholding. If he, but he could. But he's, 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 you've got to run something in in in. With yeah, you've got to everyone's got to be in effect. Of course. In a, in in of course, one of the yeah. concerns I I had about it is at that time football was a cash business. Yeah, mm. and there's no getting away from the fact that yeah, you yeah. paid cash, everything was done in cash, yeah, yeah. and you don't want some outsider coming in checking. You know the the, the minor <laughs> yeah. things. Well, we to me, to me, that's just a cash flow problem. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want to be involved we, in that. Okay. I want to look at the strategic. Well, that's what I was going to say. So even even if they said, even if they said, right, we're doing this. But you go and take care yeah. of Brandon, take care of getting us out there, take yeah. care of uh, bring other people in to help. I don't understand why that wasn't made. Well, what, what the, the important thing was attracting good people. Mm -hmm. You yeah. attract good quality. And I, I've said to you before, I think we've got good people. You mm. bring in good people and support those yeah, good people. Yeah. They've got the ideas. There's great people at the club. Yeah. There's some, so they've been really, here for 20 no, years. The, the really years. Is, I suppose like, from their point of view, they might have been thinking, well, it's someone who wants to come into the club and doesn't want to be paid. 
why why oh, why, yeah. why are we all why what's the point of all us then yeah. so yeah, there is that kind of so of i mean has the opportunity ever presented itself since that time to go into the club and work with them on that kind of on a on a board level not necessarily being part either. of the board no yeah. see i that's I've some, that never, baffles I've me never, i've never i've got other things to do you know that there, there's some things i i i think um I'm, I've always been accessible, mm. um, but that's but what I'm you know, saying. You've you've made you. I'd, I'd like to think I've made a contribution in but, other ways. Yeah, but that's to compensate definitely. for the fact that I couldn't make the contribution that they should have made. End. But the the sad thing about that is, from 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 my point of view, is that all these things that you do, which we'll talk about in a moment, they would have benefited even more if you'd be if you'd helped the club become bigger and better do you know what i mean you yeah. you know you know these things would have looked after themselves you they wouldn't necessarily need you if someone had been there and said we'd love you as an advisor on the board because that just to me makes common sense you've got <laughs> you've got contacts you've got the intelligence you've got the business sense you've got the love for the club and yet nobody welcomed you into the club to do that they, they were okay to say well why, go and do, why don't you go and do these other things that they should have been doing anyway they should have been looking after the players found the former players yeah. they should have been they should have been collecting all old member they they're, they're things that you shouldn't have had to do thank god you did do them thank god you did do them but they should <laughs> I think things were essentially but, you should have been but, one of the club. But I think, but I think, no, 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 no I disagree with that. <laughs> From my point of view, I, I think though there are some challenges that they had their hands full with cash flow problems. Mm. I mean, one of the problems we had over the last for a long time now, but longer than we're prepared to admit, say from the beginning of the Premier League or maybe before mm. that, we've never we we struggled to pay payroll. We've struggled to, to, to meet our debts. We've had to borrow, had to change banks, to do to, to finesse, mm -hmm. uh, finding the, the cash to do things. We let the ground fall into a state of disrepair at one time. Mm. And I think it was only when Bill took up, under Peter, that I think the ground was in a terrible state. We, we hadn't, you know, we, we just couldn't afford to do certain things. Now- The park end was, and that and was- And then you've got the park end. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what yeah. the big two T's, that was the plan. Yeah. But, but there was cash flow, there's no question about it. And you he can't, was, I'm going to have a go at the people who were working there because that was, they managed it the way they managed it, didn't he? But that, that's that's the frustration for me. It's not the fact that I'm having a go at, uh, at Bill or, or other board members at the time. If you've got somebody that wants to come in and help and, and wants to bring a team in almost separate from the, the board, could, could the board could have stayed the board? I'm not saying well, you course. have to be on no, it. I, no, no, we, I would, I would essentially never, never at all want to be involved in that. I would only want to make sure that the that the turnaround took place. What's, that, the, most, that what's the, the most important thing for us as fans is the team, isn't it? It's, it's how the club's moving forward, the team. The board could have stayed the board and had the ultimate say. There's no question about that. But well, the most important thing to us as fans it? is how we feel about the club. Mm. That's how we feel. Yeah. If you noticed too, a week ago, we felt great. Yeah. Didn't we? And now all of a sudden yeah. the bubble has <laughs> yeah. popped a couple of times. That's football, isn't it? That that's football. We don't feel quite as good now. If no. we don't get a result on Friday, we're not gonna feel very good at all, are no. we? Yeah. But I think people would have bought into the diet. I think the thing the thing for me is I feel as though we're moving forward the game as a club. Because of a new input, yeah. The, the last it's, week, it's, the last week's delayed. They no, put up other I think, things. I think the things that we would, I was talking about. Yeah, I think you're going to see them happen mm. dramatically. You're bringing somebody in with real oh, business savvy. Years. Well, it's twenty, 20 years. years. It's twenty years. And but you're is, but better to do it better oh, later. Oh, listen, and that's. And reason. I think you're going to see a tremendous. I think you're going to see a tremendous influx of quality people to support the to quality support people it. are already there. Mm. I think that's Definitely. what you're going to change. And and one of the things that you will uh, I think that will sacrifice is, is that accessibility you won't you know people mm. won't be ac as accessible no. as they were before because they're now running that's, a proper that's business. not yeah. a bad that's, that's not, not a bad that's thing. not the worst thing in the world I mean you know yeah it's not the worst thing in the world but you know coming back to yourself form I mean the former players foundation you know you mentioned they're helping just helping players not wanting to see well, I did, heroes. I did, it, I, did heroes? It be, I did that before, <coughs> before we formed the charity. Okay. You know that. Uh, was this I, the first thing you've done, David? That was, that was to support the club. 
Well, that I guess the Everton, I guess the Everton collection was the you first. You started thing that off. That was that, that, that where you started. Was but if I go to the the, the, the first radical thing mm. was yeah. that no one had done before was yeah. that I, I I was a friend of Brian Le Bone and you know a, a tremendous ambassador. Yeah. You know, a twenty four yeah, hour a day ambassador yeah. of this club. A tremendous man, a generous, kind hearted man. We'd walk along uh, Old Hall Street putting money into expired parking meters to help people. That was Brian. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, seriously, that was that. Mm was the big heart of the man mm. and we'd talk about things and how we can help you know he knew people he knew everyone he knew people who were down on the luck essentially or were uh, were hurting from injuries for the last so many yeah, years yeah. and we talked about players who were well paid at the time but they didn't have any skills after the no, it was done, wasn't it? It was done, yeah. so we uh, we went about, he'd, he'd asked me if I could help him out, and I did that privately. I don't, names are not important. We, we did that, and then uh, we thought maybe we need to do this in a more structured way. Mm. And, uh, and I, I, I thought of a charity, a, a registered charity. I, I paid to get it registered, I got knocked back by the Charity Commission, because it would never been done before. It, it was not regarded as being a legitimate cause. Yeah. We got knocked back three times until I think it was on the fourth occasion we got it registered. And then once we got it registered, it was tremendous the support we got and from Bill, from uh, Walter Smith, from people at yeah. Lord Grantchester. People wanted to help. We, we'd identify people. We needed a poster, a couple of poster children, and we, you know, we got those. And and one of them was turning their life around, which is always a good thing. You know, you've got someone who's a recluse, and all of a sudden you get them to lose weight, get off the beer, get them in a suit, and put them out there, and everyone loves them again, and they feel great mm. about it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then you've got the ones who can't walk. They've been active all their lives, yeah. and they, they're pretty much crippled through football, and they're too old to get national health assistance. But they've only got a couple of years left. But surely they deserve to be yeah, paying yeah. to be paying free for a couple of years. And we did those, and they're remarkable. You know that is like, you know, giving people the feet again. Yeah, yeah. It? that really is. So we did that, and, and you know we done that, I don't know hundred of them. We raised a couple of million, and what with the help of the f what we raised it, but the donations came in mm. from the fans and from the club. Yeah. Of course, because if the people that, as a fan, you've seen run, loved, run through yeah, brick yeah. walls for yeah, them and yeah. get those injuries, I yeah. mean, even play. I mean, there's players. I mean, a lot of the players from the eight, 80s now who've got like. Uh, I know we've had Degsy Mount on, and he's he's had to have his ankle yeah. uh, fused. I think that happened yeah. to Trevor Stephen as well. He had to have yeah. his ankle fused, and you know, a lot of them still carry the scars yeah. of things that we love them for so yeah. it's, it is only right that well, they, they, they they they're like prostitutes you know they are they ruin the bodies for the sake yeah, of well, other you, people you'll get the you rain know, on the street you'll write up you this is this is this is uh, good for you it's just you go going in they hard hit it's hard hit hard hit yeah what um what it does with the uh, <laughs> i'm sorry you're looking at him there uh <clears throat> what it what it does though is what we always had with our club is compassion Mm. Yeah. It's a it's a wonderful wonderful quality, and we as a group maybe it's because you know we've got more character than our neighbours. We're used to the disappointment, the highs and lows <laughs> of life. Is we 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 you know we don't just support the club; we support one another. Mm. And I think I'm very proud of of that saying and the fact that we do have this compassion. And I think that's been taken by Everton in the community to mm. a new length. Yeah, I'll I mean, I could fantastic. never have dreamt of what they've done. I bet you did. I, I bet you bet you did dream of it. No, I didn't. I bet no, you I did. No, I didn't. But I think what they have done is is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I, I really do. I take I take my hat off to them yeah. on that. I mean, I think it, it's tremendous. Um, that's taken it levels away and now but other that's people what it like, should be because of football clubs at the well, heart of the community it's, 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 an ins, it's a social institution well what Barcelona did with the former players found they, they took that in a yeah. different, in different yeah, way a different you know way, yeah. the, the, the all Barcelona players Messi and, and the likes they, they all have to pay 0.1% of their income towards a fund to look after their old players, should they as well? It's like buying a Mars bar a week for them. Yeah, but it's you know you can imagine. That's point, what we should point, be doing. Zero point one percent is a lot of money. They're not going to notice. They're not going to notice either. That no. money from a, and, and the recipients are going to notice, and that's the difference, that's isn't the difference. it? Yeah, they, they, they're changing people's lives, yeah. and and I think as I say, Barcelona is more than a club, isn't it? That's what they. That's, yeah. their, that's their motto. Is, is, yeah, yeah. And and I think so. And I think we are. Yeah. I really think that we are, and I think we continue to to show it. Yeah, and, and I say that does great. Work. I mean, the other one, I think this is this probably this one's a little bit more 
modern and people might know you more for this one is obviously the Everton collection. I know you said that came before. I know that you said that come before the former Players Foundation, but when you say that, it was that from a personal point of view because obviously the Everton collection is a that's a longer term. But it, that's the largest. That's the largest collection in the world, the isn't it? The finest collection. Well, it is the, the f largest, but it's the largest, the isn't it? It's the largest, but it's also the quality of it is is beyond. Because it's not Everton, just Everton's it? history; it's Liverpool's history. It's the history of obviously those other football teams involved in all the pioneering teams. Yeah, are there. and and before that, as, as I was saying to someone the other day about it has every program from the first season of the football league. That's you know eighteen eighty eight, yeah. but it also has every program from. The season before, before that, yeah. that yeah. which is just it, which is just incredible, mm. and it's got every you know when we had the joint programs with Liverpool, it's got every one of them from man nineteen oh four to nineteen thirty odd, so it's got like it's Liverpool's football, it's history, history. It's Mersey. It? It's a social history of Merseyside, yeah, uh, which is tremendous. I mean, it's a tremendous thing that someone should have done. I'm glad that they did it. No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad you did it. I'm glad that I did it, and I look forward to the day when we can really enjoy it. You know that mm. it's in a big museum, mm. and 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 more qualified people than myself can display it and mm. can educate people. Not just about Everton's history, but about just, about just, Liverpool's yeah. history, about Merseyside's yeah. history. Did you start that for yourself, though, as a as a? No, no. I'm not a collector. No. I, so I, what 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 inspired you one day to just go? My mother, my mother uh, said, "I'm clearing out the attic. I've got this old box of stuff that you you never read as a lad." Yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, I've got all <coughs> these old nice programs. Job, I've got all these old programs. I, I'll throw them out. Should I throw them out? I said, "Oh no, send them over, Mum." You know, yeah. an old uh, batter shoebox it was in. Seriously, she mm. put this. Her mail came over, and my wife looks at it. Oh, what is this? You know, well, you're getting them. But you know, Bob was stains on old piece of paper. <laughs> you know. And I looked at it, and then uh, I put it into a. Um, I, I contacted Everson. I said, "I've got these. Do you want to put it in your collection?" And of course, they said, no, "What collection? <laughs> yeah. We haven't got anything yeah. like this." So I said, "Well, you know, maybe I should start about. Maybe we should be doing mm -hmm. this." And we had a um, uh, we had a lovely house in Houston, and we had a closet that, that I had to put everything away. There was no Everton stuff around the house. <laughs> put it in the closet. Keep it out of the way. I don't want to see it. We put it in there. That was the day until Hurricane t um, Katrina came. No, sorry, um, what was Al Alicia. Hurricane Alicia came, and um, you know, when we had to bunker down here. You know, we got all these winds and everything, and t took the took the roofs off the houses across the road. And there's my wife, myself, the dog, in in this closet. And what's there to read but the Everton Pro? Oh, <laughs> <brilliant. coughs> so we're there reading it, and I'm, and of course it's got where I changed the teams, you know, like, you know, yeah. I, I've got team changes yeah. in it. So yeah. I'm reading this too, and what are you reading? So I'm telling them about, you know, it's strange how you look at something and it all comes back yeah, to you. Yeah. 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 You know, do you remember the game in the. Oh, yeah, yeah that's the game. This happened, that. That. And this yeah. happened. You may not even remember the goals, but you remember when something happened on the way mm. there or yeah. something. Yeah. It's the experience of being a football fan. Yeah. You, you remember these things. So I'm explaining this to her, and as I'm telling her, I'm thinking, I've got to do something with this. <laughs> you know? So after we, you know, after the winds died down, <laughs> yeah, and they found Volvos were in different parts of where, <laughs> where they should be, we went outside and then the collection's still in one piece. I said to her, well, I'm going to collect every Everton Liverpool program. That's where I'm going to start. And then, because uh, my wife's from Farmer, said, I'll collect every Everton Bolton program. Let's just, you know, let's yeah. just do something. Then somebody can pick up on it. Then I thought, oh, to the heck with it. I'll buy. It. I'll, I'll collect every program. I was interested in knowledge. That's what the kick thing. I wasn't interested yeah. in things that glittered, things that yeah. you could kick, mm. things that you could kick with. I was interested in in know-how, in knowledge, intellectual curiosity. That was what I was interested in, and that's what I pursued. But like this was in the days before the internet. Well, I was going to say, how did you do yeah. it? How well, did you do it? Well, I, what I found out was there's, there's a bunch of people who can do this. Agents who will, you know, uh, dealers yeah, in, yeah. In, in memorabilia. Just starting up then, so I would come over and I would tell them, there's anything to do with Everton. You know, I'd give them a start up and give them a list, but in the end I just threw the list away and just said, anything you've got associated with Everton that's beyond a certain time, I'm interested in buying. Buy it for me and I'll sort it out after. Well, it's like putting a wanted poster up on the lamp post, you know. We'll buy stuff, you know. Well, it came, it came flooding from in. everywhere. But I realised it would do. But what I thought we'd get were programmes. I didn't think we'd get people's lives would come. 
right. you know that we'd get these sort of like tickets to obscure games and mm. just you know the little bit we've all got collections mm. you know we've all got yeah. bits and bobs and uh, some people have collected them for longer some people have left them to the children and, and whatever so all these things came in and when you put them all together you really you're building you're up building something up, yeah. something extremely special mm. you know like I, I remember getting one guy's collection uh, what you know uh, buying this collection and he had like tickets for like the Bullens Road for, for like about 20 years and then it stopped and you gotta wonder I wonder what happened to yeah, him. Did they stop? you know why did he stop and he didn't start again you know and why did he stop did he did he go to the park end did he you know, what did happened, he, yeah, I wonder what, what happened, happened to story, him yeah. you know and you've got like he, he had like programs Everton against Blackburn but never against Burnley or you know, <laughs> you know all yeah. these things he had his favorite grounds that he went to so yeah. they, you, you can take so a little yeah. piece of somebody mm. else's life you know, and you're putting all this together so uh, around this time come like the I guess the 90s um, Christie's and Sotheby's they got involved in it and football memorabilia just took off yeah so then you know I, then I went out I had a few bob that I could spend you know okay. and, and I, I just went and I just suck it all up well let, I mean, that let me ask you the ultimate question then what is the most expensive Elizabeth's in the other room it's okay what was the most expensive piece I like you it's bought? Calm, don't I? Yeah, she's not watching that's a good question. Um, I've always bought people's collections. Very rarely have I bought. Uh, I bought. I, I'm not saying who it is. I bought people's stuff for more than what it was worth. Just yeah, to, you've just told me to, that before. Just yeah, to, just to look after them. So I bought the stuff for like twenty or thousand pound when it wasn't worth quite that. Let's say because uh, there was the premium of looking after someone. So I've done that. I'd, I'd go to Christie's and spend seventy thousand, and she wouldn't know. You know. <laughs> but like, I got every. Se I remember going there one time. I got every season ticket from Stanley Park, all the way through Priory Road, through Anfield, all the way up to Goodison Park. I got every season ticket for that, and like that was. I think that was about seventy thousand. So the the thing that you got. I know you're looking at me like that, but you got to ask yourself. You can't let that go by. Yeah, yeah. You cannot allow that to go back because it's not going to come by again. No, you, you've got to you've got to invest yeah. in it, even though you know you you have a hard job justifying it. You know, I once came back and I told Liz that to my good lady wife that there's somebody at this auction that had paid ten thousand for you know for a program, and she just laughed until yeah. she realised who it was who yeah. had paid the ten thousand. You know, I'm sure you once told me you you went to someone's house to buy a shirt. And you told, yeah, you've done something similar. You paid massively over the odds for it, but then when you went back to the car, you told Elizabeth it was, you don't, you haven't paid that much for it. No, I told her exactly what it was, and she told me to take it back. <laughs> Did you? Oh, God, of course not. No, I've been married for 41 years. I know how to play, you know. Is there any, is there any... Remember the other day when you said you're buying FIFA <laughs> and Pez? Yeah. <laughs> is, there yeah. A, is, is there any, um, have you got anything, you know, an ex-player shirt? Or is there any any one particular sort of item you'd bought, you know, a, a medal, a former player's medal or something like that, that you know is worth more than anything, or worth to you, something not, to yeah, you? Not well, when we money. when we transferred the collection, we transferred the collection and we made a donation to the collection of about a million pounds. You know, we we left that there, you know, in order that it would find public ownership. But you know, when you do something like one this, pass, one you know, something you've got to be, you know, because I, I wasn't. I'm still good because no, I'm still working at 44. <laughs> well, That's wasn't, killing me. Wasn't well, you know what what you do with 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 your life? Life is about fulfilment. It's not about the pursuit of happiness. That's overrated. Most people who pursue happiness <laughs> are not happy. It's about fulfilment. This is advice for your viewers. Oh, yeah. It really is about fulfillment, and you can only do your bit yeah. in life. Yeah. Seriously, sure. you can give back, and you can just do your bit, whoever that's for. Yeah, yeah. And and that's what we were in the process of, of doing. Now, what was your question about? Something you bought for yourself, or, or not? I, for, I mean, it's it's not, when we transferred the collection, I told you that we yeah. left, we, we gave this donation. Uh, there were certain items that we didn't do, and I think I may have mentioned this to you before. There were certain things that were so personal to me, actually had been given to me, mm. that I didn't want to part with. Mm. I didn't think it was right to part with mm. because they'd been given to me. Me one, you know, uh, next uh, Wednesday we're having my farewell party at the cathedral, as you two yeah. are invited, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you're, you are my friend. Thank you, though. You, no, you, you, you know, you are. Uh, you now, Peter, you've got to keep the age <laughs> up, haven't you, Peter? Uh, <laughs> and we had one, one that I was. You're getting worried about getting older, aren't you? Because oh, you have a little pop every time. Oh, you know, the fact you're both. Oh, it's, it's it's all right. So, so Senator so Kennedy, so, un un so under, 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 unprofessional. Is this man you? It's not me, mate. Might as well have it. Barack, this for you. Barack. That doesn't necessarily stop no. me from ringing, you know. And it's far away, isn't it? <laughs> just thrown it. <laughs> right, so uh, I had one of these going away parties. I have more going away parties mm. than like the Rolling Stones. It's a tour that I'm on. Okay. And um, Alex Young came down, he heard about it, and he, he, him and his wife came down uh, as a surprise. And we did it in the Adelphi, and uh, we all said nice words and whatever, and Alex came up to me and he put his hand out. I put my hand on, and he put his hand down the top, and he gave me his 1966 FA Cup when it's metal. Now, that's Alex that's here Alex. to yeah, say. Yeah, the bash, I, I still own the money. Yeah, uh, and that's just—it's it's beyond belief. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, that yeah is he's, he's my hero. Another one was, and I've told you this. Where about, is he? Uh, where is he? Oh, I'm not telling you where. Is it, is it on the display or is no? It? Is it? Is it heck? No, it's locked. Say nothing else. Yeah, move on. It's in the bank. Uh, with um, Brian the Bone gave me one of his international caps, and it's just these, you know, that somebody gives you a part of their life. Mm. It's just uh, I, I consider it. I'm flattered. I'm honoured to receive such things. And the third yeah. item is I went to the World Cup when I was. I told you. Yeah, you know, told Cup me. Yeah. With, when I was a kid, and I went to all ten games, and Ray Wilson signed the cup final ticket. Did for you hitchhike? Uh, yes, we did do. So full set. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't we no, do that? Like why, just, why wouldn't we do it? Though? Exactly. I'm just bringing you know, it back. We, we, were good at, we, were good at, we were good. Well, see, you hitchhike out of witness. There's all these chemical trucks going somewhere. <laughs> as long as they go in it's what else is on those trucks, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> maybe that's a, maybe it's some kind of superpower. <laughs> maybe that's what it is. <laughs> Let's move the studio to witness now. We have less time uh, next year, Paul. We are being millionaires. Um, Based so on that, witness. That's that's what I still yeah, have. That's and, um, so the collection itself, I mean, it went on. It went on display. Well, part of it, a part tiny part, five part of it went on display at the um, the library, the Picton library. Picton library, and some of it went on display in the museum as well. It did, do, yeah. 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 So, do you envisage a day when all of it is yeah. in is in a museum? Like, oh, if ever get a new stadium, let's say. Oh yeah, it, it, it will become a cornerstone of that mu of that uh, ground. It has to be a part. of Did you put it. anything? Did you? Um, I know. You won't have because I know what what you like. But did you did you ever think of putting any like stipulations? Yeah. And say have right. you done that? Saying oh. it's, it's got to go on display one day. No. But no, I'm no, getting no. back. There's things that it can't do. Okay. No. Oh I, no, I don't want it back. It, life's a lot easier when you don't worry about it. I don't you know, think when when, when you've got like the Everton collection, which yeah, was kept in the only. which was kept in the bank in. Um, in Chester, we kept okay. it in the vaults there. Yeah. And every time I wanted to look at it, it cost me 150 pound to open it. <laughs> Bank say. Just, yeah. Um, the stipulations were it has to be preserved yeah. properly at the right te temperature, temperature conditions. Yeah. It has to be kept in a safe place. It has to be added to. Um, it cannot be sold. Nothing apart. Even if there are duplicates in it, it cannot be sold. It can be loaned to places, but it cannot go to Anfield because <laughs> if Anfield. <laughs> Because if the fine folks at Anfield want to see their history, they have to come over to Goodison to take a look at it. <laughs> or Bramley Dock or whatever else. Wherever it is. So you're hoping... And that is a stip that is, now we have, um, you're saying about the history, like we have the, the tender documents for the building of Anfield. Mm. They are in there. They're There's in lots there. of stuff. I mean, you know, the ledgers, the, the minute books, document detailing in quite detail the the split between the, the two clubs, the or two, the formation yeah, the of formation Liverpool of in there. The whole documentation of the in, the interactions between the principals is well documented there that's all in there so it is a big part of Liverpool's yeah. history yeah. and when we sold the collection when we transferred the collection the real interest that it came from representatives of our neighbours but of course typical representative of our neighbours who lived in the far east and in the middle east okay. and they made incredible uh, generous offers to us which we were really pleased to decline because I'd prefer to take a lot less money and be able to sleep at night. <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's what we did. And we'll that's it, I'm serious. Pen. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, for the Everton course I would, of course I would. So that, hopefully one day that'll all be in one well, place. I think it'll be, be a tremendous celebration. 
I, yeah. I really do. Uh, that once we've got, the, I know that uh, that the, you know the club is seriously thinking about the museum. And and what do you do? Do you, would you buy the Wilmslow and do it up temporarily, or would you just wait? Just wait and then do it. Do it properly properly class. at the top. Yeah, you know, you, you're going into Everton world. Do you imagine you're walking into Everton world? The indo you know the indoctrination that I got as a kid would be there. And everywhere. also, it would have to be. It'd have to be a very secure site, wouldn't it? Let's be honest. It wouldn't. Yeah. You couldn't just to say we're going to throw. You know, we're going to put it in this one place. It'd have to be in a walk and go. Or it's weird. Hot walk. It must be. I mean, is there any? Have you got an estimate for the whole collection? Of what it's worth. Of what it's worth. Yeah. Off camera. Well, I imagine it's worth about four or five times what it was worth when we sold it. So uh, that's not I, an answer. That's not an answer. No. Well, do you want to? Really want to answer? What about what about the priceless? I don't know what it's you would answer. No, the price you cannot. Some of the items no, I know that are in there. I don't know how you would value them. What would you insure it for? We insured it for about four million. Uh, so, so, so about five times that you'd insure it for now. Do you think? I don't know, but you could. You, you could. You're looking at something maybe like that. Okay. Um, okay. So that that needs to be sorted out. Very secure place. Uh, <laughs> Sure, people will thank you for that. But let me just say though, I'm pleased that uh, you know, with the people who were involved in, the, in Lord Grantchester, Keith Wyness, Tony Ty, they showed a lot of initiative mm. to actually get it done. Anyway, they got lots of funding to secure it, and yeah. uh, I mean, it was never going anywhere. Yeah, Be believe you me, it was yeah. it wasn't going to go into alien hands. But no, they, but, but they went. Secured it. Oh, they worked really hard mm. to do it, and they Good need corner. to take full credit for actually, uh, you know, securing for it. The fact that we haven't we haven't mm. uh, exploited it yet is the fact that we not don't have a home yet the to way exploit the it. Way, yeah, I was going to say yet. Uh, do you have to wear white gloves every time you touch something? Yeah, of course you do. Like Ray, Ray Wilson, every time he gets the uh, 66 ball, That's always gets his white gloves on. Of course you do. It's, it's, it, it, it is something that belongs in the British Museum. Um, it's of that quality. And the great, then white gloves, because they can double up as a referee in this. Billions. Yeah. Flash. Showing his age there, isn't he? All <laughs> Showing his age? <laughs> well, was it a bit different seven years ago, was it for you? Growing up, snooker was oh, snooker had gone. Anymore. Uh, so yeah, after the Evan collection, the Hall of Fame's coming back as well. This yeah, fantastic yeah. tradition yeah. that was uh, had been going on for years, and obviously eleven years, eleven years, and it's been missing for seven, seven. And basically, it was up to people to just pick. This time around, they but had to pick four from eight. What's, uh, the, what's special about the Hall of Fame is that it's the fans' Hall of Fame. They get to yeah. pick who goes mm -hmm. in it. And there are some, uh, um, the, the obvious people who are in it, I think there's 120 odd players and officials who are in it, but there was, uh, there's some people who are not in it, like Gary Lineker, mm -hmm. excuse me, has never got into it. Now, I don't know what Gary's done wrong, but he's not a favourite. I love never Gary. You know, we, put, we put him up five times and five times mm -hmm. he got knocked back. And you can't keep doing that. I mean, after a while, we, we it was based on on the guidelines of the baseball hall of fame in Cooperstown. Oh, I man. went up there and talked to him about how you do this, how you do it properly. <laughs> I love that. I love the, the fact that you didn't just read a book. You, I go and see them. Yeah. Well, why not? No, why not? Exactly. If you're going to do exactly. it, do it proper. You know, it was the first time that someone had done it in the hall. I mean, in in surprise, this country, me. it was the first time someone had done yeah. it. So, you no, know, we predate it. We put a lot of work into it, picking the original people to make sure it covered all decades, not just mm. the guys who were going to show up to pick up the awards. Yeah. yeah you know, course. we there's a tendency in all Hall of Fame for them to be twisted, mm. to be uh, towards so skewed, let's say, enough. towards who's around at this yeah. time. Yeah. And yeah. now it's not. It's never been an official thing. Which is probably no, it's an independent exactly, and that's why it's, it's a good, that's why it's a good thing. But would you going back to like the some of the Everton collection? If Everton did build a museum, would you like this to be like a section where this with this Hall of Fame is is uh, taken under the same you know the yeah, same umbrella? If they, want, if they want to do it, because they yeah. should. If they want to, own, there should yeah. be something. There. I can't carry on doing it. I mean, we've got a little group of people who who help in doing it. Uh, and uh, we've, we're going to do it for three years to benefit the former place foundation to raise to raise funds mm. the first time this time it's mm. on the 10th of march we're doing it at the uh, hilton 
Um, and we're only going to sell 300 tickets. We're just doing it small, yeah, and just uh, so that people enjoy it. Remember, we used to do 750. Oh, and the man. year after that, it's likely that we'll go back to 750. Mm. Then, on the last time, I would like it to go like you know, Echo St George's Arena. Hall or Echo Arena somewhere. Do it big. Yeah. There were 1,500 people. Doesn't surprise do me if you're running it. It's a, it has a sense of what what why the Hall of Fame. Well, the Hall of Fame is we we, we are celebrating people who f fantastic footballers, mm -hmm. people celebrating people who made tremendous contributions, excellence mm -hmm. at Everton. But we're also celebrating ourselves. Mm. We're celebrating the fact that we're Evertonians, mm. and you know that we uh, and that we know we enjoy getting together. Yeah. And if yeah. you put seven hundred of them together, we have a great time. It doesn't matter <laughs> what it is. We've it? seen we, the videos we, and we, people we, dancing on tables. We're and dancing on tables. Duncan Ferguson and, and yeah, it's it's a tremendous it's a tremendous atmosphere. It's it's a healthy atmosphere. There's no no never any trouble. There's never been any trouble there, and it's great fun. And and we're celebrating <laughs> who we are. See, yeah. you just said there, and it's something. This is why it annoys me that you haven't run the club. It's because you just said we sh Why not go to the Echo Arena? Why not go big and bold and yeah. sell it out? We, but the ever never do that though. They've got oh, their I, own. I, but no, but they've got their own awards, and they stick them in like St George's Hall, and it's all black tie, and it's all like ninety pound a ticket. Where they should go, go to the Echo Arena. Yeah, we'll have all the fancy ones on the floor, but let's fill, let's put the cheap seats for the rest no, of us. No, our intent with the Hall of Fame when we first did it was, it was, it would be the price of, of admission to the ground, and you also got a book, right? You also, so you came away with something. Normally, it turned out to an autograph book. You know, I tell the tale about when Jeanette Rooney went, and Wayne was too young to be played, you know, the young player yeah. of the year, so he sent his mum, <laughs> David Moore sent his mum, and she spent like hours signing Wayne's mum, <laughs> Wayne's mum, Jeanette Rooney. It was lovely, yeah. it, that to me is what Everton's about. Oh, no. it, it's just, it's just a, lo it's oh, just a lovely thing. Yeah. No, it is, and it's I great. Think I've doubled up doing no, the food as well. I've, I've been to do it. Jeanette was there. She was doing the same thing. <laughs> it's one. lovely. I mean, yeah. it's just that's what it. That really is what it's about. And you, you got you know Wayne's mum. It, it's better. It's more valuable item than Wayne's. Yeah, yeah. everyone's got Wayne's now. Yeah. So that's coming back this year. You're also the lifetime presence of the shareholders. Association. I am. Yes, I am. I'm very proud of that. Yes. Fantastic. How many shares you holding? Percent? Not many. I give mine away. I give mine away. Oh, you know that. You've told you that before. I know. Well, on my mum's deathbed, she said, I, you know, I've got a couple of Bob, David. I haven't put the gas fire on for two weeks. I've got a couple of Bob. And uh, I want you to have it. I don't want it, mum. You know, go, you know. She said, well, I want you to have it. I said, well, if I, if I take it, I'm going to buy shares, Everton shares with it, and I'm going to give them away to lads who, you know, who are deserving. You are not deserving. Who, who are deserving. <laughs> and that's what I did. You know, so lads who helped out on the uh, Hall of Fame. Or on other things. Yeah. I've, I've only been too glad to do. They never asked for it. They didn't know it was coming. I just would give them one of them and, and whatever. And I, I regret not giving away a dozen or something like that. It's what left. you do. <laughs> it's a, it's our club. Can I say to you, it's our club. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter who owns the shares. It's our club. And we'll always be here. You know, mm. the manager, the chairman. What they're passing through. Yeah, they're just going. We're going to be here. It's nice when billionaires own them as well, let's be honest. That's great when <laughs> Well, it's, it, it means that you can get rid of the manager, doesn't it? The, it does, that does, manager. It, does it help. It means that someone can write a cheque to pay him off. Yeah, it, yeah. As painful as that it is, does but help. it means that we don't have him for another year. Mm. That does help, yeah. We, well, that was a big cheque in the end, wasn't it, as well? It was a phenomenal cheque. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's, I mean, I'll be honest, This is we've been talking for quite a while. But really, we delved into half of these things. We could have been here for for a, for a very, very long. But that's why you've got a book out. Let's be honest. Sell, you know. That's why you've got a book. Let me tell you about the launch of the book. Go on, go on. Uh, I don't know what day this is going out of, but tomorrow we're having the club. Tuesday. Club. That's the, Tuesday. The club is getting involved and we're having a launch at uh, Everton 2 in the Liverpool 1 shopping centre. And we're having uh, stars from the past and stars from the present. Ghana, do we call him Ghana? A Ghana? Ghana. Adrissa Ghana gay, let's just say that. So we've covered all the bases Fabulous there. Flavor, and and uh, Mason Hol Holgate. Holgate. I was asked yeah. who I wanted to go, and I thought these are two lads that we don't see or we've never seen mm -hmm. before. Let's have them there. And we've got Tony Kay, the infamous Tony Kay. Infamous. The FA Cup winner, uh, Derek Temple. Derek Temple, yeah. And we've That's got Ronnie. 
Ronnie. Ronnie, yeah. Ronnie, 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 Ronnie. Ronnie's a lovely fella. Yeah, he knows more about fantastic. football than, than most of us. He's fantastic. fantastic. Uh, and, and they'll be there from four o'clock onwards. It's by ticket. I don't know how you get tickets. I think you get them through StubHub, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, Is that an Everton one know. or Everton two? It's it Everton. It's at Everton two, the one that's in the, in the city centre. You mean Everton two, Liverpool one? That's the one. That's but the one. I'm not saying that because I don't want to offend my new friend over here. <laughs> Have you seen the badge? Point to the badge. There, there, yeah. My new friend who claims to be a copite, but he's wearing the badge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the next day we're having the private function where it's my farewell do and we're having it at Liverpool Cathedral and on the is, it, is this another farewell do or is this this is it guys what does that what does that actually what mean farewell, farewell do? do mean well you won't see me much more after this I've told Ronnie really that this, this Laurel and Hardy act of me and Ronnie Goodless is he's got to find another straight man <laughs> <laughs> well you say this is your farewell do yeah. but we're doing a Q and A on the win on the at the wind yeah like, this is my farewell tour yeah oh we yeah are, we are but let me tell you about so we're having it at the at the uh, the cathedral yeah. they gave me this cathedral this is because I'm a citizen of honour, which gives me three and things. I, I was there when you got that as well. I can park on double yellow lines. You didn't know that. I, I can I can herd my goats through the Mersey Tunnel. In which direction, I'm not sure. I've <laughs> not tried that yet. And the third one is, I can get buried at the cathedral. Well, I will get buried in the deserts of Arizona. But in lieu of that, they said, well, you can come and celebrate your departure at the cathedral. So we're having... It, uh, we're it's having heavy this. No, listen. We're having this do. We're representative of the club, former players, everyone you know, good guys. All these two are coming. Even, we're not sure about him. <laughs> we'll right. decide on the night whether he's and, good enough. And the, do you know what next year? Can I just tell you where Go it's on. going to Go be? On. Where it's going to? This is what's special about it. We're getting the cathedral will be closed for this event, which will only be eight tables, and they'll be right in front of the altar of the cathedral. And that, my friends, Sash is on our table, though, isn't he? Uh, no, unless you're waiting on him, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, but we do have a cross section of guests and I'm really pleased that people are coming out to it and my wife and I, my wife's come over for this and it would be nice for people to thank her as well because yeah. as you know she's a good, she's... Well, she had to put up with you and she's a most that. decent person. She, yeah, she, as I say, she God, she, she's a terrible person, she made you retire when you were 42. What a terrible woman! She did, because <laughs> the reason why she wanted to spend time with me and then you saw it all the and all that stuff, yeah. 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 and just yeah. flew home every other week. What I was just going to say is, when we, when me and Baz come to the states next year, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to come and see you in Arizona. Do a Q you and can a. do. We will do. do. A and a in Arizona. Well, we we are going to uh, our farewell. Next farewell do is in Las Vegas. Where when? The lad, When's this? David, David Kurtz in in uh, oh. January. We're having one in in Las Vegas. You know my address. You know. Yeah. 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 Playing over, we'll be there. <laughs> I'm just getting close. I'm just getting closer just to getting home. Closer, getting yeah. to home. It would be Fantastic. great. Yeah. I, I'm, I really am looking forward to the two of you at the uh, at the cathedral, at the Anglican cathedral. Yeah. He's at the Anglican. No, oh, no, I should have said to him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the wig man, really. Uh, <laughs> you go over there, son. And no one. And we've got people from all religions. No one goes there. to wig. The, the, the yeah. Roman Catholic bishop is coming as well, and and uh, we can we cut because everywhere you know, we include. We're very inclusive. We're very inclusive That's club. It. What it's about. We're a very inclusive club and we're all friends and all great Evertonians. Happy days. Yeah, that's that's how you finish it up, isn't it? That's so yeah, Everton Crazy, it's out this week. Uh, the, 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 can I just say that the demand for it has been incredible. I, 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 if you'd like a copy, get a copy quick. There's only yeah. a thousand copies. They're all on the bookshelves. I think Amazon have stopped selling it because they've run out of stock. The publisher has stopped selling it because they've run out of stock. It's at Everton too. It's at Waterstones, and it's there. There's a. I've just found that there's a there's a picture in it, and it's got Justin Bieber. There you go. There you, it's got Justin it's got, Bieber yeah. in it. Um, yeah. There you go. It's got Joe as well, isn't it? It's just, it's got Justin Bieber, and that's all I'm going to say. It's You've obviously been uh, one of the chapters is called Blue Gold, and that's what David is. That's it. Thank you very much, David yeah. France. Everyone, so yeah, everyone's going to applaud now. Hold. <laughs> Thank you. So make sure you buy the book. Big thanks for David for coming in as oh, always. And we will, we will, we'll, we'll come <laughs> over to see you. Can I, can I just say, I'm glad that you got your chair back. 
wasn't the same. Wasn't the same. <laughs> he was over there. I wasn't the same sitting over there. I'm, I'm lucky I'm on. You didn't even want me on the first time, apparently. It was in the contract, just Baz. Just Baz. He said you'll make too many cheap jokes. Not I've, my let you words. The, I've let you do the cheap jokes, so anyway. Uh he is he is Mr. Everton, he's the forest gump of Everton Football Club. It's like it's it is though. From from tough beginnings to just from uh, well my, domination. Mine is a roaches to riches story. I have to tell you this, we didn't have a pet <laughs> as a kid. We had roaches. Uh, seriously. And I used to train them. We had a room <laughs> No, we had a room and I would go uh, we had a piano. Yeah. And he played pretty badly the roaches on the yeah. piano. But we had them and I would take a, a marble, listen, and I would coach them and like they, they could run like Kanchelskis and they could drift off the ball like Messi, but the ball control was atrocious. <laughs> Right. Like, on that note, here. on that note, thank you for watching. Thank you to De Dr. David France, Mr. Everton, for coming in. Dr. Everton, even for coming in. Good job. There you go. Thank you. <laughs>